Hello, welcome to this video on Cisco ACI and F5 um, practical integration example. Um, this is part of uh, the ACI pre-built static test in CPOC in London and my name is uh, Chris Sekula. The objective of, of this video is to give you an introduction to Cisco's application-centric infrastructure pre-built static test that is available in the CPOC labs. Uh, in this particular case in CPOGLAB in London. Uh, this is going to be a, a practical demonstration uh, of how a layer 4 to layer 7 uh, appliance integration uh, looks like with Cisco's uh, application-centric infrastructure. To start with, we're going to show you our um, Cisco's internal uh, website uh, that is part of the CPOG Labs. This is also a best place to actually um, start looking into proof of concepts within Cisco. So let me just go ahead and uh, visit that website and this will give you an idea of what uh, what's available from CPOC and how c you can get more information. So on the Cisco's main website, if we go uh, to go and uh, to, to if we go to www.cisco.com slash go slash CPOC uh, this will take you to the internal communities website that is open to um, Cisco uh, account teams but also Cisco partners. Um, within that website this is the best place to find information about proof of concept testing in Cisco. So uh, we based in um, this particular lab that I work for is based in London so we're going to visit the London, uh, the London website section and within that website uh, there's a section called uh, Available Tests. Um, this section lists the, the, the various pre-built static tests which are available in, in CPOC Lab and uh, the test that uh, I'm covering or one of the tests that I'm covering is the ACI uh, PBST. So in here we have a mm, few information about the ACI PBST. We have the, the topology, the full topology uh, of the setup that, uh, that that customers can use or the Cisco account teams with customers can use. Uh, we have a bit of a physical topology and a quick overview of the various scenarios that, um, that, that are available. Um, at the bottom of this page um, I'm soon going to add uh, additional information like the documentation uh, as well as the, the link to, to the full videos so that um, customers or account teams actually can, can download this video, a copy of this video. So, of course, this is not going to be a full uh, ACI pre-built static test uh, in a video format. Um, we're limited to half an hour of the recording uh, for, for YouTube, so I'm going to give you a bit of a teaser and uh, show you uh, what's available. Uh, and we're going to go through one of, those, uh, one of the scenarios that we, uh, that we uh, quite often show to customers uh, when they are on site in CPOC London. Um, so the, the scenario that we're showing is an um, example of um, a, a, bu a bunch of servers uh, which uh, are demonstrated in this diagram on the right hand side. Uh, those servers are in the subnet uh, 192.168.99. Um, there's also a client subnet 2020.20. Uh, uh, 20, 20. uh, both of those subnets are slash 24. So the objective of the of the setup, the objective of the of the video, is to show you how the ACI network is going to provide connectivity between those two uh, subnets in first instance. Um, and, at, um, uh, and, and later on, what we're going to show is how, uh, as part of that connectivity, we're going to insert a load balancer um, in between the clients and the servers. So let's get started and let's uh, log on to our, uh, to our ACI environment. I've shown you the logical one, and this is the actual practical implementation. So this is how, um, um, how we have it cabled in. Um, so the, the whole setup consists of three leaf nodes. 
the other 9396 uh, Nexus 9000 um, 9396 devices running under the uh, under the umbrella of ACI. Uh, this uh, this this network or this topology also has two spine nodes, um, which are the 9336s, and of course the the APIC cluster uh, consisting of three um, APIC servers. Uh, attached to the leaves uh, is a set of um, fabric interconnects, um, uh, full UCS, um, full UCS installation, which is the Cisco's Blade environment, um, as well as uh, an F5 physical physical F5 uh, appliance, um, and this is our physical infrastructure. We also have another leaf, uh, which has a a bare metal server that we're also going to show you how uh, how is how it's um, implemented within the whole setup. So before I actually dive into the uh, into the GUI, uh, I'm gonna give you a quick overview of what has to be uh, set up in the GUI for this whole environment to to work correctly. <coughs> so any kind of networking connectivity uh, within the ACI network happens under the umbrella of tenant. Um, so in this case, we're gonna set up a CPOC test tenant um, under the umbrella of a tenant. There's there's a uh, there's a network which um, translates into a uh, VRF. Uh, within the VRF, we're going to have two uh, bridge domains, which are mm, kind of uh, slightly similar to what uh, a, a VLAN in a traditional network would be. Uh, we're going to have two of those uh, bridge domains. Uh, each bridge domain, which will have a will have a gateway, like we had um, in the in the logical diagram. Uh, there's a gateway for the 202020 20 subnet and a gateway for the 192.168.99 um, uh, subnet. Um, so under the umbrella of the VRF, um, we also have uh, we also have uh, an application profile. So the way networking is configured, the way um, devices are able to talk to each other, it's done under the umbrella of application profile. So uh, application profiles are um, are, are, are sets of um, uh, endpoint groups linked together with contracts. Um, so you know it might sound a little bit um, um, new to s some of you, but uh, uh, endpoint groups is the way we group together devices that connect to ACI network that are um, that logically function uh, uh, or, or serve the same or similar function. So uh, we'll have um, uh, an applic and, uh, an endpoint group for our clients and uh, a separate endpoint group for our servers. So within those endpoint groups, we're going to have uh, some servers and some uh, some clients. And connectivity between the endpoint groups is um, provided by the means of this this contract. So this is all uh, um, this is all concepts which we normally explain to customers during the the pre-built static test. Um, in this case, we're just going to quickly uh, quickly mention some of the some of the basic details. But for us to implement the the logical um, the logical requirement of the topology that I showed you at the very beginning. Uh, that's exactly what we need to create. We need to create the, the, the following uh, following concepts. So without wasting any more time, let's uh, dive into it. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to log into our um, AP cluster where all the connectivity or all the configuration is going to happen. So we're going to start by uh, creating a new tenant. CPOC test. Um, so the the tenant creation wizard gives us an option to create a new network. And we also have an option to create a bridge domain. Uh, so I'm going to create a bridge domain one clients. And within the bridge domain, we need to define a subnet. And we define subnet by specifying a gateway. So 2020.20.1 slash 24 is the subnet for uh, clients. We're going to create a second subnet, a second bridge domain. Um, BD-2 servers and for servers we're going to have 192.168.99.1 uh, uh, slash 24. So that's the two bridge domains that we need and that's all. So this takes us into the tenant that we've just created, the CPOC test tenant. Um, so under the application profiles, right now we have uh, we don't have any application profiles, so we're going to quickly create a new application profile. Um, so we're going to call it web um, web ordering. 
uh, application profiles and the application profiles will need endpoint groups. So we're going to create two endpoint groups. So uh, we're going to create servers and the servers will use the servers bridge domain and we're going to create um, clients and the clients are going to use the clients uh, bridge domain. So uh, we can also at this point of time create a contract that will allow traffic between those two endpoint groups to flow. So we're going to start by creating a provided contract under the uh, under the service EPG. So we have an option to use uh, one of the existing contracts uh, or create a new one. So we're going to create a new one. So we're going to call the contract um, service to clients traffic. That's the contract. Uh, the contract needs a subject uh, which is going to allow all traffic in this instance. We're not going to filter any specific um, any specific type of traffic, so we're going to allow any everything to talk to each other between those two endpoint groups. Okay, so that's the provided contract created and we've selected it here and now our clients are going to consume the contract. So we're going to reference the same contract name Okay, so our service provider contract, our clients consume the contract. We'll submit those changes. So that kind of creates the, the basis of the connectivity, the basis of what we, uh, what we need. Um, right now, uh, as part of those endpoint groups, there's nothing uh, classified to be part of the endpoint groups. So we need some endpoints. So we need uh, some devices that, that will connect to the, to the APIC network uh, or to the ACI network, uh, and, and they will become the endpoints. Uh, and, and they will be ultimately classified as uh, endpoint groups. So to quickly um, give this environment some endpoints, we're going to use um, some virtual infrastructure. Uh, we have a couple of VMs um, available for, for this test. Um, so I have uh, a few ESX hosts. Uh, so let me just show you the, just simply the VMs. So I have, uh, I have two web servers. Uh, on 192.168.99.11 and 9912, and also a client on 2020.21.10. So this is within uh, within vCenter. Um, the way ACI network shows itself or demonstrates itself to um, to vCenter administrator, it shows itself uh, uh, itself as a distributed virtual switch. Um, it's kind of a special case of distributed virtual switch because all the configuration of that distribu distributed virtual switch are driven from the ACI network. So right now you'll see there's no, um, not many um, pod groups on, the, on on any of those distributed virtual switches. So what we'll do is uh, within within the ACI network, within the ACI configuration, uh, we will uh, provision uh, the uh, integration between the ACI network and, and VMware. So we'll select uh, immediately and we'll need, uh, we'll need one of those. So this creates a pod group on the distributed virtual switch that we can attach our VMs. And this way the traffic from those VMs are gonna be, is gonna be classified as um, um, specific uh, endpoint group. So for our clients we've uh, created uh, we've created the uh, the integration, but we need one more actually. We need uh, this guy because I've got two distributed virtual switches on different um, ESX hosts. Uh, so that's one, and I'm just going to create the second one. So this is for our servers, uh, and servers are sitting either in here or in uh, in here. Okay. So what this should have done already exists. Uh, that's the guy we need. To Okay, so if we look at the uh, recent uh, activities, uh, you will see the APIC talking to the to this uh, virtual environment, and what um, the APIC has done, it has provisioned um, provisioned uh, a couple of pod groups. Uh, those pod groups are named based on tenant, um, based on uh, application profile and endpoint group.
So we have those the, the endpoint groups available now in within our virtual environment. What we need to do now is plug our VMs into the appropriate uh, pod groups. So we're going to edit settings on our client VM and we're going to plug our client into the client's pod group. Uh, we're going to edit the web server and plug it into servers. Uh, we're going to edit the other web server and also plug it to servers. So let's uh, quickly have a look at our uh, client VM. Uh, so it already has the appropriate IP address. So what we can try and do is ping its, its uh, default gateway first of all, 2020.1. As you can see the default gateway is responding. Let's do the same thing with our servers. So one of our servers is going to ping 192.168.99.1. Okay, he can ping his default gateway and the last one is the second server ping 192.168.99.1 and we'll leave this ping running. Okay, let's go back to, um, to APIC. So one of the things that we can do is we can monitor if the APIC has now um, has got the awareness of those VMs. So we can see that they've been discovered so we now see uh, under the clients, we have the VM called client-01 uh, um, and under servers, we have two, uh, we've detected two VMs, um, to two of the web servers. So as I said that, um, you know, one, when, we were, when we were configuring this whole, uh, this whole thing, we've, um, we've, configured a, um, we've configured a contract between the servers and the clients. So that contract actually allows the traffic to flow between those two different EPGs. By default, if you don't have a contract within the ACI network, uh, no traffic flows. Uh, since we have a contract, we should be able to ping each other. So I should be able, from uh, the client subnet, should be able to ping uh, one of those servers. 192.168.99.11 Okay, so we had an issue we couldn't uh, ping because uh, the default gateway on one of the VMs was um, misconfigured. Anyways, um, we can now see the traffic flowing, so half of the configuration that we wanted to show is now working. So that kind of concludes the first part. So looking back on um, looking back on um, on the diagram on our logical diagram that we started with, uh, we've kind of uh, achieved exactly what uh, what we wanted to achieve. We have a client VM on a 202020 uh, 20, 20 subnet uh, being able to ping uh, one of it one of the servers on the 192.168.99 network um, but what we want to do now we want to insert in between those um, those two subnets uh, we want to insert a load balancer so in this case we're going to be um, getting um, an f5 uh, big ip appliance um, configured and um, connected to to the aci network um, so our topology or our, our environment is going to change a little bit and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to try to insert a, um, a load balancer uh, on that 2020-20 subnet. So uh, we're going to have a virtual IP, uh, a VIP on address 202020 um, so that our client can uh, talk to that IP address and be load balanced on, um, on different servers. So uh, to do that we have to first of all get the physical connectivity up and running. So if I just remind you quickly, this is our topology and the F5 appliance is plugged into interfaces uh, 1 slash 11 on leaf 1 and leaf 2. So we have to do uh, some basic ACI configuration, first of all to get those two interfaces configured correctly for the correct speed, for correct properties of the interface, uh, as well as uh, getting the, 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 the VPC configuration up and running. Uh, so in order to do that, we have to follow this um, um, this workflow, which takes you through a number of steps that are required to um, to configure um, to configure this this uh, this connectivity. 
I'm not going to go into details of those steps. Um, plus, um, you know, there are some shortcuts, there are some ways you can perform various uh, various of those steps um, through through some, some wizards that are built into the GUI. But I want to show you actually a very, very low level configuration uh, within the ACI network. So we're going to go and um, first of all configure a, a VLAN pool, so a range of VLANs that uh, will be dynamically used to uh, facilitate the connectivity towards the uh, towards the F5. Then we're going to create a physical domain that, gonna rep that is going to represent that uh, connectivity. Uh, then we're going to focus on configuring uh, the, mm, the interface, um, the specific interface properties. Um, uh, those properties will group them into a policy group, will attach it to an interface configuration and ultimately attach it to a switch profile. So keep this, um, keep this diagram in mind because that's exactly what I'm going to do in the next uh, couple of minutes. So let's go to our um, to our ACI GUI, and we're going to start by configuring um, a VLAN pool. So that's our VLAN uh, uh, that's our current VLAN pools. So we're going to create a VLAN pool um, that is going to be used to send traffic in and out of the ACI network towards the uh, load balancer. Uh, the VLAN pool is going to be dynamically, uh, um, uh, is going to use dynamic allocation. Um, this way ACI Fabric can automatically choose uh, which VLAN is going to use to send the traffic in and out of the load balancer. So I've just given it uh, a range of 10 VLANs. Um, uh, for my use case that's enough. Uh, we're going to create a physical domain that's going to represent the connectivity towards that F5. Um, so key thing for ACI is the naming. Um, I'm kind of adding this um, extra bit of information at the end of uh, all the names to give me some more, um, uh, give me more idea of what uh, what that specific configuration is. So I'm creating now a uh, physical domain, and that physical domain is going to map to my VLAN pool. And the last thing I need to do is create uh, a new attachable access entity profile, uh, which I'm going to do just here. I don't need an infrastructure VLAN, but I need my uh, physical domain. So that's the physical domain for our F5. We'll skip the rest of it. So that's the basic stuff done. Uh, so this is the stuff that we're going to need. Uh, let's now focus on configuring the actual interfaces. So um, I have all the required uh, interface uh, level policies uh, already done. So those policies um, control things like the speed of interface. Um, something I would definitely use is um, some of those port channel policies. Um, so we're going to have a LACP port channel towards the F5. So this stuff is uh, pre-configured. We're going to reuse this LACP active, uh, LACP active uh, configuration. Um, so those uh, those are done. What I need is a new policy group. And this is going to be a VPC policy group because we're going to use a virtual port channel uh, in between the two different um, leaf nodes and this the the F5 appliance. So um, again, uh, naming is the key. Uh, so I'm going to create a new policy uh, policy group called uh, 10 gig VPC towards my um, big IP01. I'll select um, 10 gig connectivity. And for port channel, I will select this LACP active configuration, and then I can link it with this uh, attachable access entity profile that we've done uh, a few seconds ago. Uh, and that's pretty much done. Uh, the last thing I need to do is create an interface profile that will target a specific interface. Uh, in this case, we're going to try to configure. Um, sorry, let me just change the name because that's the important bit. So the way I wanted to name it actually is like this. So this indicates it's a connectivity from leaf towards the F5. Uh, interface that we are targeting is 1 slash 11 and the interface policy group is this one, which is the VPC towards our uh, big IP appliance. So with this done, we have everything ready to configure our leaf uh, our leaf nodes, but before we do that, 
Uh, let's quickly review the VPC configuration. So within the ACI network, you can select the nodes, um, the pair of nodes that are going to be uh, forming the, the, the VPC pair. So this is already configured in my environment. So I've got node 101 and node 102, uh, which are uh, configured to be a VPC. So all we need to do is we need to either create a new um, leaf profile uh, or reuse the leaf profile that we already have. So I have a leaf profile here that targets uh, leaf 10, uh, 101 and 102 uh, that will nicely configure a VPC for me. So under that uh, leaf profile, I can select my um, my uh, F5 interface profile. So uh, submit that. So and submit this. Uh, so we're kind of ready on the ACI part. So on the ACI side of the connectivity. Uh, everything should be ready. Uh, the next thing we need to do is to configure the actual F5. So in the F5 uh, appliance under the network configuration uh, within the uh, within the trunks section, uh, this is where we configure a port channel. So we're going to select uh, uh, and say configure a new trunk. Uh, I'm going to give it a name like this. It's really it's it's kind of important to keep the the note of this name because we'll use it later in configuration in the APIC. Um, so in this environment, I'm using interface 5 and 6 towards the ACI network. We'll enable LACP, uh, finished. OK, so that's, um, that's pretty much done. If we refresh the page, you can see this interface is up. Um, so our port channel has come up. And in the APIC network, we can actually also quickly review it uh, to see if our port channel is up. So under interfaces, under VPC, uh, we can expand some of those and figure out which one is the one that we've just configured. So, okay, so that's the guy that's uh, uh, interface 1 slash 11. Uh, we can see it's all connected, it's all up and running and configured. Okay, so um, this is kind of checking it from the point of view of uh, of the GUI. Uh, let's do exactly the same thing uh, in CLI. So I'm just going to log on to one of my nodes. So that's the leaf node. Uh, if I do show port channel summary, uh, we can see that interface 11 uh, is actually using port channel 11. So if you do show VPC, uh, we can see that uh, that VPC is up. Okay, so um, half of our success. Let's now move forward. So the way layer 4 to layer 7 services are uh, implemented uh, within the, the ACI network, um, it's done with the concept of packages. Uh, packages is um, is a um, set of scripts. Uh, it's a single file, but inside it's a set of scripts which uh, which gives APIC um, view of on how to configure a, a specific appliance. So um, this package is provided by the uh, by the vendor, and um, that package pretty much teaches the APIC how to talk to the um, to the appliance. So uh, I've already have the F5 uh, Big IP uh, package. Actually, I've got two of them, uh, the, the first version and the current 1.2 version. I've already imported the package, um, so it's now available within the APIC. So what, I c what we can do now is we can start, um, start configuring. So um, it kind of happens in two stages. First of all, uh, within our management tenant, uh, where all the management uh, points uh, for the ACI network are handled, we're going to uh, create an instance of a um, layer 4 to layer 7 device. So right click, uh, create a layer 4 to layer 7 device. Um, so we're going to call it um, big IL6, uh, big, um, big IP01. We'll select the device package, we'll select the model, so single mode. Uh, physical appliance with multiple contexts. Um, this is how we tell the APIC how to talk to that uh, physically, how to talk to the uh, to that appliance. So this is the physical domain. Uh, this is credentials. 
the management IP address 254 uh, the protocol and then we define the connections so th we define the interfaces so in here we're going to use the same uh, name for the port channel as we did uh, sorry what I need to do is I need to actually select the PC uh, we'll use the same name uh, and this on this drop-down box we need to find the VPC details uh, be careful because the list first of all uh, actually shows the individual links of the VPC and only um, somewhere down the list we'll see uh, the actual required connectivity so it's this guy here where it says topology pod 1 uh, paths 101 102 um, and in the brackets we have the policy group uh, details so make sure that you select the one that has both nodes 101 and 102 direction so um, we're going to use the same uh, interface in both directions so to send the traffic in and to bring the traffic back update on that uh, next so right in here we can we can configure some of the basic parameters of the of the of the appliance but we're just going to um, press finish so this should now uh, flag as um, as stable. We're just going to wait until this information uh, pops up here. And once it's stable, uh, okay, it's stable. So now it means that uh, the APIC is correctly talking to um, to the F5. Um, there's um, uh, there's one fault uh, shown here, but that fault is now in the clearing state, so it will disappear in 30 seconds. So now that we have the appliance uh, kind of talking to the APIC fabric we can uh, export this uh, configuration or export this, this the connectivity uh, to a uh, tenant. So in this multi-tenant environment, you know, the, the single physical appliance would be shared across tenants. So we define the appliance in the management tenant, but then we export it into the specific tenant that we want to use, um, that we want to give access to the, to the appliance. So uh, that's the appliance and uh, that's the tenant that we want to um, that we want to share the mm, the appliance with. So I'll submit that. We can now go to our CPOC test tenant, and within here there's a section layer for two layer seven services. And if we look, we have the imported um, imported device in here. So uh, what we need to do is we need to configure a number of properties. So we're going to start by creating a uh, graph template. So uh, big IP load balancer uh, what type of node is a single node and we're gonna have an ADC in a two-arm mode uh, we're gonna select the virtual server uh, function and the profile HTTP so that's the basis so one thing that we need to do here is under the internal uh, function node um, under the internal um, connection we have to enable this attachment notification um, and that will help us to dynamically add uh, servers into the pool so once we have the load balancer uh, ready uh, we can now uh, apply this template into our tenant so consumer is going to be our clients provider is going to be our servers we're going to use this service uh, graph template and the contract that we want to modify to insert this uh, layer 4 to layer 7 service the load balancing service is that contract that we currently have between the tenant and the uh, and the service so we're going to kind of uh, within the contract uh, insert the the load balancing function uh, so now what we need to do is we need to configure all the parameters this is kind of um, um, there's quite a lot of uh, configuration that has to be done here to get this um, uh, up and running. Um, so quite often um, um, customers or, or you know SEs would use uh, an XML API to do this configuration. But I'll just quickly show you what's the essential uh, minimum that, that you need to do. So we're going to start with um, configuring local traffic. Uh, so we're going to update this. And within the local traffic, uh, we need to configure and monitor and within a monitor we just need to select some of the properties uh, monitor frequency five seconds protocol we're going to use HTTP to monitor the pool number of failures we don't, we're going to do three so that's done and then we have the pool uh, we don't have to specify the members because the pool type 
we're going to use is uh, dynamic. Uh, load balancing method we're going to use a round robin. Uh, pool monitor uh, we're going to select what we've done up there. So that's the properties. On the network side, yes, we need an external self IP. So this is what the uh, load balancer is going to use. Uh, floating no the external self IP 2020-2254. None. And the net mask is still. Five five two five five two five five zero. So that's the external. That's the internal. Address one nine two one six eight ninety nine two five four. Net mask two five five two five five two five five zero. Lockdown none. Uh, we don't need any routes, we don't need those pools. Okay, listener, that's important, so that's our VIP. Uh, we're going to enable source NAT so that the traffic goes back to to the load balancer. Uh, and protocol TCP, virtual IP, that's important. Uh, virtual IP 20, oops. 2020, 2020, update. Uh, we need to create a network relationship and reference uh, the network. Okay, we need a pool, pointer to the pool. Uh, and this configures some of the settings, things like um, how do we limit how quickly or how many connections uh, can be updated. So I with the dyna dynamic pool we have to be careful so that uh, we don't overload um, the notifications towards the towards the F5. So this is all the settings that or the minimum settings that I need to uh, perform for um, for the load balancing function to work. I'll finish that. So that should um, uh, do a couple of things. So it should first of all configure the F5 um, so if we have a quick look under the F5, uh, there's a new partition now inside F5, and if we look at local traffic and the traffic map, we'll see that there is a um, uh, that there is a um, mm, that there's a new VIP. Uh, there's a new virtual server, and um, we've already discovered uh, two nodes. And so there are two uh, two new servers uh, within the within the pool of servers. Um, those are automatically or dynamically added to the pool, and I'll show you. I'll prove uh, prove to you how it's done. So if we now go back to uh, maybe to our virtual environment and let's try to ping our VIP from here. Ping 20, 20, 20, 20. Yes, we can ping it. And if we now open the uh, the address 2020 2020 we can see we've hit uh, one of the web servers I mean if I refresh it a couple of times we can see that uh, we're nicely load balancing across those two uh, across those two web servers so I told you that um, the pool uh, or the configuration is dynamic so I can now add um, add more web servers into the uh, endpoint group and as soon as they are detected inside the endpoint group uh, they will be automatically provisioned on the on the load balancer. So I'll show you what I'm going to do now. Is I'm going to go to our APIC, and we're going to go to our application profile. We're going to go to our servers, and um, so far um, uh, within our servers endpoint group we have two virtual machines. Uh, let's add a physical server. So imagine you know you you're running a virtual um, you know a bunch of web uh, virtual web servers. Um, your requirements go up. You need a proper physical bare metal server. Um, how it's uh, um, how we can uh, add this to the um, to the pool to the current pool. So um, if we kind of refer back to the uh, diagram for a second, uh, where is my diagram? So uh, this is our physical environment. So we have a physical server plugged into Node um, 
uh, 3 on interface 1 slash 10 this is what we're going to try to get connected to our endpoint group so to do that first of all under the domains we have to add a physical domain that represents the connectivity towards that um, that bare metal server so that's uh, mm, that's done and then we need to create a static binding uh, to bind towards the port uh, on which uh, that physical server is plugged in so this is on node 3 on port 3 uh, on port 10 sorry vlan uh, 10 uh, sorry vlan 20 and we're going to send it untagged we're going to submit that configuration and if we look at our uh, operational statistics uh, as soon as that as soon as that links come uh, comes up we should see the the server let's quickly look at at the actual server so if we look at this uh, mm -hmm. server we can see it's on 192.168.99 uh, network so if we ping the default gateway 192.168.99.1 we get the response so uh, we can now see that under our servers endpoint group we've just learned um, another MAC address this is a physical uh, physical device in this case and um, because of the of the integration um, that should be automatically added to the pool of web servers. So if we look at our network map, we can now see uh, another node. Uh, the system is now testing if the node is available. Uh, and it, since it's available, since the HTTP protocol is running on it, uh, it's been added to the pool and available to uh, load balance across. So let's see if, we, if we're lucky enough and if we can load balance. That's the physical server we've load balanced into. Um, that really concludes the, uh, the video and the, the configuration. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it gives you some, um, some kind of idea how uh, a practical implementation of, um, of integration between a uh, layer 4 to layer 7 appliance and, and Cisco application-centric uh, infrastructure uh, looks like. Thank you very much.